Here's a funny story about how YouTube works. Did you know that if you swear profusely or show gratuitous violence or gore in the first 30 seconds of a video, you have a significantly increased chance of that video being demonetized by YouTube's automated tracking system. It's a funny little quirk that remains largely unknown even within the content creation community, but being aware of it can make it easier to navigate the treacherous terrain that is YouTube's content policing policy minefield. Okay, holy shit, Scorn is really fucked up. Scorn has been on my radar for a while now, but admittedly nowhere near as long as it's been on other people's radars. I first heard about it when it was revealed to be an Xbox or PC exclusive some two years ago during an Xbox showcase. I was immediately like, hey, the art designer from Aliens is making a video game. But upon learning that HR Giga died the same year this game was announced in 2014, I quickly accepted the fact that this was just some people inspired by his work. But that's okay, because no video game has ever done more justice to HR Giga's artistic style than this one, but we'll come back to that point later. Scorn began its life as an ill-fated Kickstarter that couldn't meet its goals, but the investment of a number of private backers saw the project get off the ground. After that, an alpha build was made available, and you can see just how far the game has come since then. What earlier looked closer to Doom 3 has evolved to take on a much more distinctive, totally unique visual style, at least in a video game context. After that, another Kickstarter went up to continue the project. That one was successful, and a few years after that, it seems to have caught the eye of Uncle Phil, who locked it in as an Xbox and PC exclusive that will, of course, end up a day one Game Pass release when it launches October 21st. I had the chance to play through a brief preview build of the game, probably went for around 90 minutes, but it, combined with what I'd already seen of the title in other gameplay trailers, has got me really, really fucking on board with this whatever it is. If I sound confused about it, it's because Scorn isn't exactly genre bending, but it's occupying a number of different genre spaces, dipping its toe into horror, action, walking sim, puzzler, and straight up shooter. It never commits to any of them, at least not yet, and as a result, Scorn feels defined by its presentation more than its gameplay. This will likely disappoint those looking for a more playable experience, but as I've said in the past, not every game needs to be deeply playable. Some of them just need to go for a vibe, and I think that's what Scorn's doing, and it is one hell of a vibe. Scorn begins without much explanation, an approach that is maintained throughout the rest of the experience, it seems. Straight out of the menu, you wrench yourself from the ground that is trying to reclaim you, and after what appears to be some visions of another place and time, you begin making your way through the biomechanical maze that seems to have entrapped you. The first impression that Scorn makes with its visual presentation is remarkable. I mean, truly remarkable. Obviously, HR Giga is the central driving inspiration here, and if you're at all a fan of his work, or if you're just a fan of the Alien movies, you're immediately going to encounter a motif that is going to stop you in your tracks. It certainly did for me. I'd seen this in trailers to this point, but only briefly, and now seeing it in the flesh, pun intended, it's a totally different experience. The level of detail on every single surface is wild. Like, I can't imagine how long it would have taken to design these spaces. It feels like every single texture has been custom made for the single square inch it occupies. The density of the design is staggering, every hallway feeling unique, every new chamber so grand and ominous, every biomechanical switch or contraption so fucked up and gross. We've seen art design that looks like this in other places, but never before in the world of video games. The closest I can think of is The Medium, which was based on the work of painter Zitzlo Bekczynski, but the implementation there was far less detailed and ambitious than it is here. That was still fantastic, by the way. I mean, The Medium had plenty of problems, but I think that everyone is agreed that it looked incredible, but even in its most visually ambitious sections, it had nothing on the level of detail that Scorn is delivering. But the beauty of Scorn, if you can call it that, isn't skin deep. Just as impressive is its approach to biomechanical design. The demo starts out with you affixing a sort of interface to your arm, and that grafting foreshadows the link between organic tissue and technology that is the bedrock feature of this world.
All of the switches and mechanisms you interact with aren't simple button presses. They require you to insert something, to penetrate something, to sever an umbilical cord. I don't want to get too fucking artsy here, but Giga's art was very sexual, and I'm not talking about in the Pornhub sense. I'm talking about the messy act of sex and gestation and the violence and trauma of birth. These are central themes in his work, and they are very much on display here in both a micro and a macro sense. Because yeah, your first weapon is not only connected via umbilical cord, but it's also this sort of pokey penis thing that you insert into switches or you use to pop these floating gas things. A lot of stuff just looks really phallic and things need to be inserted into other things and then drained. I know I'm laying it on really thick here, but for real, go and look up Giga and you'll see that I'm not reaching for this stuff. I really do think the developers of this game were inspired by not only Giga's more prolific pop culture ready sci-fi art, but also by the way he wove an exploration of sexuality into his work. Even the demo itself was sort of a birth and death factory. The entire level was essentially a conveyor belt that I could see was meant to shuttle people from station to station so that terrible things could happen to them. Later, after some nutting things out, no pun intended, I found the starting point for that assembly line, this collection of pods that housed these barely living wretches. And then I pushed him from station to station, and then yeah, terrible things happened to him, culminating in a gruesome death so that I could make use of one of his limbs as a key. And it's a lot, but like, yeah, it was kind of like you were pushing this baby in a carriage and it was helpless and mewling like a newborn. And then, yeah, so look, I know this is a lot, okay? But this is what you're signing up for with Scorn. And it's more than just, hey, this looks like Alien. There's a lot going on here, tonally, artistically, and thematically, and that was what really sold me here. It wasn't, oh hey, this looks just like Prometheus. It was a realization that these developers weren't just aping an art style, they really clearly understood it, and they sought to impart its core themes, not just through visual presentation, but through level design and gameplay as well. I will admit that I was not entirely sure what sort of game Scorn actually was before I booted up the demo, and now that I've played through it, I can't say that I'm totally clear, but whatever it is, I know I like it. From what I can tell, Scorn dips its toes into a number of different genres without ever fully committing to any one of them. The first and most obvious one is horror, but this definitely isn't a horror game in a traditional sense. It seems unconcerned with manufactured tension like jump scares or QTE chase sequences, relying instead on its foreboding world to hit that tension quota. It does have enemies that will chase you and damage you, but they aren't particularly threatening since you vastly overpower them with your weaponry. Scorn is definitely scary, but trying to pigeonhole it in the horror genre it definitely doesn't work. Same goes for the shooter or action genre. Like I said, there are enemies here and you do have a range of weapons to fire at them, including a pistol, a shotgun, a grenade launcher, and possibly more. But the way enemies move makes them more like environmental obstacles or puzzles than enemies that elicit true combat. Though I must say that the reloading animations on these weapons are pretty much the greatest reload animations on any weapon ever. Scorn has a lot of walking sim energy, since so much of it was about walking around empty space trying to figure out what the fuck is going on, and with very little in the way of handholding. At the same time, walking sims are typically very narrative-led, and while that narrative may emerge later on, I suspect that Scorn is going to be much more laconic in its approach, letting environmental storytelling and atmosphere be the focus. The most accurate bucket to drop Scorn into is probably puzzle game? But not The Witness, think creepy, messed up mist. It's a vacated world that's essentially a puzzle box solved one step at a time. Each new section, a new Rubik's Cube to be rotated this way and that until everything is aligned. The first section I described earlier, the goal I had was to get a door open, and to do that, I needed two people to pull the switch at the same time. Obviously, I would eventually learn that I didn't need two people, I just needed one additional limb. And so each preceding step in the puzzle was about getting that pod into the right place so I could do that gruesome amputation. Broadly speaking, the puzzles here are very simple, but what makes them interesting is that you get absolutely zero hand-holding. I mean, you wake up and that's it, you're awake. No UI, no quest markers, no dialogue boxes. Just figure it out, bro. Not even a good luck and a pat on the ass. 
If you've watched me before, you'd know that not being told what to do in video games is very much my jam. I love when games have the confidence in the player to figure out stuff for themselves, and Scorn absolutely has that. Further, the construction of these levels made for some excellent pacing. You step into spaces, and the first thing you see may actually be the fourth or fifth step in the puzzle. The process in each section is to circumnavigate that area of the map, hold in your mind all of the components, and then begin to sketch out a mental map for how it all fits together. There's a lot of space between each of these steps, and they can exist on different levels. Often, there's just space for space's sake. Long corridors that lead to nowhere and that serve no function in the context of what you're striving for, but they're there because they're just there. They're red herrings for you to explore and to consider, but realizing that they're of no consequence doesn't feel disappointing, it just means you've crossed one thing off your list of possibilities, so you can then focus your attention elsewhere. Finally, a brief note on performance. I played Scorn on a 2080 Ti PC running at 1440p. It does support DLSS, interestingly enough. Even with this on, this game ran like shit a lot of the time. Huge frame drops on the reg, fluctuation from 140 frames down to as low as 20. It was very disruptive and immersion shattering. In addition, I found that I couldn't arrive at a set of settings that didn't make everything super blurry whenever I turned the camera. Frame rates locked and unlocked, V-Sync on and off, full screen or window, DLSS on and off, nothing would stop this intense blur effect kicking in whenever I turned remotely quickly. I actually ended up turning more slowly on purpose just to avoid the effect. It was a very big problem. Similarly, I didn't get motion sick from this, but I felt like it was coming, maybe. There's no FOV slider here, and the native FOV is very narrow. That makes sense given the level design and how narrow a lot of these corridors can be. But this, coupled with that blur effect when turning the camera, made for a really disorienting and unpleasant experience. I spoke to Lucy from the Friends Per Second podcast, and she said that in her brief time with the game, she got motion sickness. I'm not remotely surprised to hear that since I'd experienced something similar in my earlier playthrough. So that's frame rate, motion blur stuff, FOV, and all three of these things are bad. Usually this stuff wouldn't worry me too much in a preview, but this game is less than a month away, so while things could improve, I suspect they won't. I don't know that this would stop me from enjoying this game, but it definitely reduced my enjoyment in this demo, and I know that stuff like this can and will stop other people from enjoying this title altogether, so I'm going to be paying close attention to that stuff when it comes time for review. At this point though, I would say that there are some major question marks here, and as always, don't pre-order. It's kind of a good thing that this is coming to Game Pass, actually, it's a pretty safe way to check it out. So this demo didn't let me experience any of the combat proper. All of the combat you saw here was from the extended gameplay trailer released some months back. I can't comment on how well that part of the game plays, but I kinda don't care because it's already pretty clear to me that that isn't Scorn's focus. Just like puzzles aren't really its focus per se, nor narrative, I think the focus of Scorn is its world, its atmosphere, and its art. I wonder if HR Giga the video game was the strapline for this title during its development. If it was, I don't think that's a bad thing. Scorn being uncommitted to a single style of play means that none of its playable elements feel deep or fleshed out, and I know that will prompt many to lose interest in the title, which is fine, but I'm on board with what Scorn is aiming for because I think it's enough. I remember the discourse around Stray, which I think is actually quite similar to Scorn in many ways, but that's a whole other conversation, but I remember many people saying, well, if you took the cat out of this game, what have you got? And it's like, Dude, the cat is the point. Asking that is like, what if you took the fighter jets out of Top Gun Maverick? Would you be left with a simple high school drama? Yeah, but the jets are the fucking point, dude. Strip out every panel from Scorn and replace it with stainless steel. Replace every gun with stock assets from the Unity store and what have you got? Nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's literally a very reductive way to assess any game, but especially Scorn, where so much of its impact rests on delivering a setting that no other game has delivered before. What little time I've spent with it has made me really interested in this, and technical issues aside, I'm very much looking forward to sitting down with the whole package next month.